Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about scale and proportion and UI design. If this is your first time visiting the channel, we're going through a 12 part fundamental UI principles series and this is the fourth of the series. My name is Brendan and I'm a product designer here in Los Angeles. I create content around product design, UX, and UI design. So if that is content that you'd be interested in, make sure to subscribe for future content. With that said, let's get into the video. So first, let's start off by defining what scale and proportion is. That way we know the differences between the two. First off, scale is the relative dimensions of an element, often measured by percentages or multiples whereas proportion is the harmonious relationship between two or more elements of a scale. So let's take a look at our first example. What you're gonna do is guess whether it is a, an example of scale or an example of proportion. So go ahead, take your first shot, and then we'll go over it. Now that you've had time to think on it, let's see what it is. So this is an example of proportion. And the reason that is, is because left on here, the left is an example of proportion, whereas the right is an example of disproportion. And simply what that means is there is proportion between the icon and the text on the left side, and on the right side, they're almost the same size and it's not great proportion for the logo. Now, let's take a look at this second example. So what do you think this is, scale or proportion? This is an example of scale because they're using percentages to scale up the design. For this third example, you see both a desktop and a mobile version of a website. What do you think this is? And this is also an example of scale because what they're doing is they're either scaling down or scaling up whether they start mobile first or they start on the desktop. Now let's look at the fourth example. What do we think this is? This is an example of proportion. The two outside options are in proportion, leaving the middle one easier to focus on. So what are some of the benefits of scale? First off, it creates consistency across views and devices. Examples would be views across mobile view to tablet view to desktop view, as well as Android and iOS, those different devices and views. A second benefit is that it creates visual hierarchy and makes it easier for the user to focus on what's most important. And thirdly, it's scientific and it's easy to follow because we're using percentages and numbers. So it's very straightforward. Now the benefits of proportion is that it creates visual hierarchy as well. And, and the great example of this is this focus on the basic plan here in the middle. And then another benefit of proportion is it gives the design a sense of balance, harmony, and symmetry. So let's talk about some of the challenges of scale. First off, it's hard to be consistent and it takes discipline and a high level of focus to apply scale because it, when you, whether you're going from mobile first to desktop or desktop to mobile or, or you're creating a new tablet view or you're creating something on you know iOS and you're going over to uh, Mac OS, it's going to take an understanding of the design system which is the third point I have here. Without a design system, it's nearly impossible to scale up, but it's also gonna take understanding design patterns. And ultimately, you wanna have some sort of checks and balances to make sure that this isn't a fully manual process that you're trying to create uh, scale through. And so you can download pl plugins or just kind of double check your uh, scaling that it's consistent across the different views that you're creating. The second point here is you really need to understand the product or design that you're creating in order to make it useful. So let's talk about challenges of proportion. Once again, you really do need to understand the product or design. Secondly, there isn't a clear and obvious time for when to introduce proportion into your design. That's something that has a lot to do with what is most important to the user. And you need to really study the UI design patterns to truly implement proportion optimally, in my opinion. So now let's talk about applying scale and proportion. So the first thing that you need to do is implement a grid system. So an example is an eight point grid system, which is the most recommended system. It's actually applied by Google Material Design. And you can see here, this is showing an example of how you can use the eight point grid system. You're using multiples of eight. Um, to make sure that you have the correct spacing between each element. A second thing is to follow UI design patterns. You wanna make sure that you're following these patterns in order to make fonts and buttons and all other web elements properly scaled up or down depending on the screen and devices. 
So we've mentioned a few of them, web, iOS, Android. And here's an example of a form element that is following best practices on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side. Of course, that's not how you would typically see a form. And the third thing you can do is apply the golden ratio, which is something we've talked about in previous videos, uh, which is also known as divine proportion web layouts, if and when possible. So when you're thinking about redesigning an entire page, make sure to look at it holistically and that's when you can apply the golden ratio. And if you take a look here in this image, it gives you examples of how you can divide a page based on the pixel sizes. And the fourth thing, and maybe the most crucial thing, is to understand your users through doing testing and just continual iteration of the product. And the way that you really should be doing this is taking the time in each sprint, understanding the problems that you're trying to solve, and then whether you're meeting with people internally that can test your product or real customers, either way, it's gonna be beneficial for you to do that testing and make sure that your scale and proportion is on point so now let's practice what we've learned. We're gonna go through three different exercises. This first one is scaling down a desktop landing page and we're gonna make it uh, a mobile site. Basically what we wanna do is just do the top portion. It's gonna just be a hero section, so it's gonna be fairly easy to do. In the second exercise, we're gonna create proportion for the middle pricing tier that you're gonna see here in a second to make it the most popular option as you saw an example of in the earlier part of this video. And lastly, you're gonna go online and look for a UI design pattern, which I have links in the description for design patterns that you can follow, and then practice implementing one example. As always, make sure to check the description for the Figma asset and look for all of the other articles that I've done my research with, just to kind of read further on the subject. So let's go ahead and take a look at Figma. So as you can see, we have Figma open up here. And so over here on the left-hand side, this is the landing page that you're going to be basically creating the elements and scaling it down over here on this mobile view. And so this is the first exercise. Go ahead and take a shot at it. Once you're done, then you're going to take this pricing and make sure to scale up this middle portion. And as I said, the last one you're gonna do is create a UI design pattern based on taking a link from the description below. So feel free to get started and I'm gonna wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you got value out of this video. And the next one, we're gonna be talking about alignment. So make sure to subscribe for that content and I'll see you guys in the next one.